when I saw the 10th round with Porter and Bud, that's when I knew that Terrence Crawford would beat Errol Spence in a fight. Because, he just, I mean, listen, again, Spence is a phenomenal fighter. But y'all got to keep it a uh, bean. If you look at their tool belt and they was going to work on a home, who would have more tools in the belt? Would Spence have more tools in the belt or would Bud have more tools in the belt? You don't know what Spence got. So how you know? Well, okay, well, listen, if you don't look, you ever heard the phrase, if you don't use it, you lose it. So how are you going to talk about how you don't know what Spence got? If he hasn't well, been... I think, put, I think what how, he did with Mikey Garcia. He, he changed it up with Mikey... Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. How do you feel confident that he's going to do something that's going to be successful that he hasn't done that much? And Mikey Garcia was a small guy. He, 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 he was at 135, went up to 140, then went back to 135, and then went up to 147 to fight to fight Errol Smith. Errol Smith, personally, I think he should have knocked him out. I thought he was going to knock him out. I, I did. I lost money because I bet on the knockout, just to let you know. Well, you know, that that's your problem because you didn't do your research. If you would have paid attention to what Errol Smith said, you wouldn't have lost no money. But that's what people do when they go with their heart instead of going with their ears and paying attention. The man that boxed him, you went out for what every other Crawford fan did, thought the same stuff instead of paying attention to what the man told you. So that was on your fault, the reason why you lost money. Errol Smith said he was going to knock him out. What are you no. talking about? No, he said I'm gonna go. I said, I'm gonna go in there and show the world that I'm gonna outbox him because they say he's gonna outbox me. He did that after the fight. Nice try though. See, look. No, man. no, no. Hold your fighter. Hold your fight. Hold your fighter's feet to the fire sometimes because I do it with Terrence Crawford. I oh, do you, it. Want, you, want, you want me to? You want me to change because of you? I never had any negative things to say about Spence at all about what he's I do done. Got negative stuff. I do got negative stuff to say about Earl Spence. Yeah, I do got some. But we, but we, if he, if you ask me or say what I have negative about Earl Spence, I'll tell you. But I'm not just gonna say something negative just to make you feel happy. Why would I do that? If, if you tell, go ahead. True, but I've heard you around, and I've, I've I've heard you before, and I've heard you around, and I have never heard you say anything when it comes to Spence to say, okay, this could be a deficiency for Spence, and then when you look at the Terrence Crawford. It's ninety percent negative when you speak on Terrence Crawford. So, so you telling I, me? So you telling me that? Go, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead, man. I've been doing enough talking. Let me let you speak. So you telling me that when Earl Spence, you know, far as he had a car crash or did these things, yes, he did that. Yeah, he did that. But when it came down to negotiation, that was not Earl Spence's fault. He didn't run from negotiation. Terrence Crawford ran from negotiation because he was asking for something that he was not going to get. And he came right back. He came right back and had to come talk to Earl Spence. And Earl Spence, him and him and Earl Spence talked, and the fight happened. Marty's going to have a problem with me about what I'm about to say. Because yeah. I, I know his perspective on this. I'm going to tell you this. When you have a fighter that goes into negotiation, tell them, I want to fight for 2022. And I, I feel it's for multiple reasons, but I want to fight him for 2022. Now, if you can have Ugas, Porter, Danny Garcia, Mikey Garcia, all get at least 40% of the share, regardless if they're on the same side of the street, we understand that. But if they all can get that, but this is the biggest fight and your best opponent, why would you give him a lesser deal? And then we blame him for, you know, you're saying, you know, for, for, standing on the principles because he was about to take the deal and his lawyers stopped him because he stated on this and I, people saying I was capping about this I said bro I, that's what I can clearly see because when it's agreed in principle the principle means that I have agreed to what I see and then they have to review everything and his lawyer said bro this this deal I, I, I don't think this is a good deal and that's where the issues came because if you're going to make somebody a partner like a Roy Jones and Cal Zaggy fight the books are open buddy because that's what it is when you're doing a partnership in that term, in that term of fashion, because you're treating them like a promoter almost. It's not like just a fighter, because if you're just a fighter, you get this and you take this and that's it. No more, no less. But they did not treat it like that when the first negotiation set. And then with a no guarantee for both fighters, that that lets me know there's some issues right there alone. That's an issue, bro. I'm sorry. And uh, the fact that we hold Terrence Crawford's feet to the fire it's crazy. Now he deserves some, 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 uh, some fault in this because one, he should have had the right people like he had on the second go round. He should have had better people helping him with this because obviously the first set of people that was with him didn't really help him the way he needed to be helped. But then at the same token, 
You say you can't blame Ter er Errol Spence. The PBC and, and Al Heyman and everybody in this team, they work for him, not the other way around. And I felt like he was moving like an employee instead of an actual fighter in control of his career, knowing that this is the fight he wanted, knowing this is the plan that he set out. And he said, I'm going to collect on the belts and I'm going to take his. But then you see them giving a booty ass offer and you let them slide out the back door and try to force Keith Thurman down your throat when you know you didn't want him. And that's why he got his respect back from me because he stood on his principles. He said he'd take the L out of the level because it's over. And he followed up with that and he held on to his word. And that's part of the reason why we got this fight. But it's faults on both sides in regards to this. And I and it blows my mind when people put all the blame on Spence or all the blame on Bud when every party is culpable. Every party was culpable on that. And and and, and, and that's the thing that bothers me. And I've and I listen, I've been called names by the Spence side, I've been called names by Bud side because I will be wanting to criticize each fighter. And I'm not talking about outside of the ring stuff, I'm talking about only when it comes to the boxing ring stuff only. Don't talk about all that other stuff, yeah, unless it's applicable going into the fight. At the end of the day, I believe Errol Spence has a great chance to win the fight. But if his jab gets taken away, it's over. If his jab the gets taken away, it's over. You know it, right? The jab got taken away in the Caribou fight, it wasn't over, so what was the problem? The moment he took his jab away, the fight ended a minute and 30 seconds after, we, after he took the jab away. When, when, Earl, when Errol Spence fought Caribou, he, and he the took jab the jab away. When well, he took the jab away, the fight was he, over. He, he still he still handled his business, so it don't matter about the jab. He can do whatever. He got many different tools. We don't know what all Errol Spence get or what all he have. One thing I know that I've seen in this history, so you're going off what you what hypotheticals, what I can go by is what I've he seen. Did he did he did. To set up everything. It's his table setter. It's not an accurate jab, but it's a great table setter to set up all his other great shots. But if that's taken away and you have a fighter that has not shown high level of being able to fight on this back foot. So that means if Terrence Crawford takes away the jab and puts any pressure on Spence at any moment in time smartly and it causes him to have to reset because Spence is like a locomotive. If you let the locomotive keep on rolling and get that rhythm, he's going to run you over. That's why I feel like Terrence Crawford started it's a little earlier because he just wants to get him on his back foot because Errol Spence has not shown comfort in fighting on the back foot. You keep got a whole bunch of what ifs, man. Terrence Crawford fans always got what ifs. Terrence Crawford don't even have great defense. Terrence Crawford can't even fight on the inside, really. I'm just saying, this man going to run around. You keep saying what if, what ifs. We got to see what happened in the ring. That's that's the number one. But the what ifs are in the ring because they haven't fought yet. But you said he don't have great defense. But why does Errol Spence get hit more than Terrence Crawford if his defense is so bad? Well, if you look at their program. They're per per round. They, they, the punches they take, Spence gets hit more than Bud. But how is Bud's defense so bad if Spence gets hit more than Bud? And it's factual. Oh yeah, because I looked at I looked, I looked at the I looked at the punch stats. I looked at the punch stats. It looked like Terrence Crawford getting hit more than Earl Spence. Oh yeah, with with, with lower, Terrence Crawford has trouble with lower level competition. And you Stop. think he gonna jump in the ring? You think he gonna jump in the ring with Earl Spence? Okay. If Lord okay. James can grill Errol Spence, stop using a lower level competition because with the difference between their resumes is the Danny Garcia fight. Errol Spence's resume is not that so far shining above Bud that we can keep on using this lower competition bull crap. Because at the you end of the day, that's your thing. That's what you say. I'm not you. What you talking about? He fought Danny Garcia, who's the ultimate tune up at 147. He beat nobody at 147 worth value. What? He's the ultimate tune up at 147. Porter's a so, good fighter. Yeah, so, I give him no so, so the Sean Porter, the Sean Porter who fought Earl Spence, and the Sean Porter who fought Terrence Crawford, you tell him it's the same Sean Porter. There, you go in the ring, you get paid, you go in to do the job and get it done. He didn't is get it, it the done. Same Sean Porter. Is it the same Sean Porter? No, it's not. Come on, Sean, that man. I'm not no. making this for him. He got paid to do a job, and he didn't execute the job and get it no, done. And I'm saying that. I'm just saying, is he the same Sean? I'm not. I look, look, look. Terrence Crawford did his thing. That's not Terrence Crawford's fault. That's on Sean Porter. What I'm saying is that's not the same Sean Porter. That's what I'm saying. In the Kerr Brook that Terrence Crawford fought is not the same Kerr Brook that was a champion when Earl Spence fought him. And the Kerr and the Sean Porter that Earl Spence fought that was a champion is not the same. I'm not saying that it's Terrence Crawford's fault. No, Terrence Crawford did his thing. Sean Porter acted stupid and didn't handle his business. Terrence Crawford went there and did his thing. That's what that is. 
You know, so I'm not saying that it's Terrence Crawford's fault. I'm just saying when we're talking about people that's a little bit better, I'm saying that Earl Spence fought the better part of the fighter. That's all I'm saying. Even if it's 10%, that's all I'm saying. And I understand they both got different styles. But the, but what I'm saying is because I seen Sean, I seen Terrence Crawford try to downplay uh Sean Porter and Kerr Brook, but then when he fought him, he tried to act like they was that that was good. So I'm just saying, you know, you said keep it a buck, let's keep it a buck. I don't agree with Bud on that because the fact of the matter is Errol Spence did fight a little bit better Kell Brook, but there are some things that make it an argument for the other side, even though I'm not going to argue for it. I'm not going to say that I felt like he fought a better Kell Brook, but the fact of the matter is they both both fought a Kell Brook that was coming off beatdowns or coming off lower. Like When he fought Triple G, he took a beating, and then he fought Errol Spence shortly after that. And he came down to weight class. I mean, two, he went down from 160 to back down to 147. So so that we can people who on Bud's side can use that as an argument, but the fact of the matter is, Bud fought a lesser Kell Brook. I always will believe that. But at the end of the day, he fought Kell Brook. He beat him, and we can do all this. Oh, he fought lesser. He was lesser. No, he beat the same guy. He did what he was supposed to do. Now, what are you going to do, with Errol Smith? Because if, if 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 Terrence Crawford beats Errol Smith, which I believe he is, are we going to say, oh, he fought a, a lesser than Errol Smith? Than he was for. The way y'all treat Bud with his previous fights, what makes me think y'all gonna be any different when Spencer not make excuses when y'all always excuse everything that he's done and say it's lesser than? Because it is lesser than. What do you mean? Well, if he beats Spence, it's going to be lesser than because Spence ain't the same fighter. It's been 469 days since he fought. He got in a car accident. Check this right here out. The fight that uh, Crawford just had with David Avenesia, that wasn't a fight. That was a tune-up. Earl Spence get better work than that in, in, in the training camp. So I don't even look at that as a fight. So you might as well say he was out the ring for a long period of time too because that wasn't a fight if you call that a fight. That was a, that was an exhibition match. You are so disrespectful of the fighters. David Avenison was ranked in the top 10. He was a top 10 welterweight. When you look at the, the fighters that he can fight in 2022, every other fighter that was in the top 10 was either with Golden Boy or PBC. That means he wouldn't go on Showtime. So that means he wouldn't going to be to fight anybody else but the highest rated fighter that he can find, which was David Avenison. Stop <laughs> Quality fighters. To this. We understand there's levels to this, but stop disrespecting professional quality fighters. He's no, not on the levels, neither you one. Of you, 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 you can like, down this man for fighting a lower level competition. That's why you're saying <laughs> the man had Jerome Boo Ennis and everybody else that was right there waiting on this man, and this man looked over everybody to fight somebody that's way at the very bottom. Don't tell me about no, that's, but that's, that's unprofessional. No, you because you condone this man picking somebody at the bottom of the barrel. That's what that is. He can, he, who else are we going to fight? Who's going to be the fight boots on BLK Prom? No. He wasn't, that's why I feel like y'all be so disingenuous. Cause don't no, keep no, it. no, 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 no. Don't start that mess. He, he, we talking about before he was going to fight on, on Black Prime. Don't start running the Black Prime now. He could have made that fight with Boots before he went over there. See, now you're trying to drag it over there. No, he could have fought that on Showtime or wherever. He was a free agent. Stop the cap, bro. But do you know what the fight wasn't? The fight wasn't boots. You know the fight was Errol Spence. Cut it out, man. And they, if no. he didn't get the fight with Errol Spence, they wouldn't have wouldn't for the let him fight somebody no, else. No. You you're assuming. assuming. You're assuming. You're yeah. assuming. This is business here. They weren't gonna let him fight somebody else on their side of the street if it wasn't Errol Spence. Errol Spence you know even that? said Jamal you know, Do you know oh, that? Keep it a bean. You like, bro, you assuming, bro. Stop that. Quit talking about keep it 100, then you start assuming. You don't know that. Boots and them said that they was ready for that man. If he wants to fight, they'll fight him. That's what that's what his daddy said. That's what Boots said. But now you're already talking about keep it 100, and you're already assuming, man. Nah, man, you capping, bro. No, I'm not capping. I'm not capping. I'm sorry to give you the bad news, but I'm not capping. You just don't I'm like done. it. I'm done. Manager Martin, I'm done because his man ain't keeping it 100. He, he got so many excuses from, from her over there. I'm not keeping it 100, but he's making excuses. He don't know. He don't, I'm going by what they said. They said we were ready for Bud. If he want to fight, let's fight. And now he trying to tell me that he, that he couldn't fight over there. Man, you don't know what you're talking about, bro. Stop the nonsense. Talk about what Steven Espinosa said. We sat down and talked to BLK Prime and we didn't move forward. And then when he was when he first talked to Posey Ennis, Posey said, hey, listen, you got to talk to Shit Prime. Come on, bro. And, and then after that, what, what else happened after that? Nothing else after, happened after that. Come on. Bro, please. Wow. You tripping, bro. We talking about before he went to Black Prime. Quit running back to Black Prime. I keep telling you that. And then when Crawford left Black Prime, 
and uh, Blue Blood and them tried to go talk to uh, uh, Jerome Boo and his father. And he said, no, I'm dealing with Showtime. Go talk to Showtime. Stephen Espinosa went and talked to Black Prime. They said, well, we got to deal with Black Prime because uh, Crawford is not their product. He's he's away from them. He, they don't own him. He don't have no contract with them. So they went and talked to Crawford and the fight still couldn't be made by them talking to Crawford by itself. So don't tell me about the fight couldn't be made. Crawford didn't want the fight. No, don't say he didn't want to fight because it's about Errol Spence, bro. Stop fronting like it wasn't about Errol Spence the whole time, bro. This this is business at the end of the day. That's the fight to be made. They wasn't going to be making that. Showtime wasn't going to make the Boots fight unless the Errol Spence fight was completely dead. We found out it was you evidence it wasn't dead. They've been, they, they, that fight was basically almost signed, sealed, and delivered in February, March, bro. So oh, stop. No, it was about, no. They was on the verge of announcing it during the during the Tank and Ryan fight, but they had a couple of little things that did the, the, the iron out real quick. They already had it solidified, man. So stop. Stop. Steven Espinosa said they called Bud to try to make the fight, and the fight didn't happen because evidently it was on the Crawford side. So stop the nonsense. This is what he said. But you want to be with Spence. The timeline matters. The timeline matters. And if you don't like the timeline, I'm sorry, but the timeline is when that was happening, him and Spence was already in the midst of getting ready to solidify everything. They were no. moving. So why no. would he go back to fight Boots when he's about to finish, get this solidified with Errol Spence? No, no.